Well, after these astral meditations, I had visited all my friends in space or dropped down to their abodes on the planet and hung out with them there. And I thought, well, you know, maybe it's just time to read the book on Milarepa. I uh, get a little more classical Buddhism instruction from Tukche. And I just feel fine, cleared, cleared the decks on the mental plane, no more knots uh, of any kind. Well, I do my evening meditation. And what? I'm no longer in my familiar space about where the moon hangs out. I am in a dimension somewhere else. Wow. Somewhere is not important. Uh, when I have them on this most fantastic scene in gorgeous colors, there is this female goddess in a wet field of grass. Very wet. And she's stroking the rainwater with her fingers. She's meditating in Zen style, and the grass blades break above the blue surface water, touch her knees. She is absolutely naked. Um, from a short distance away, I visualize myself uh, in my light body. Oh, wow, in a body of light from a short distance away. And I am attired as a celestial cosmic prince. Hmm. Well, more than feeling like that, I am a celestial cosmic prince. <laughs> what is this hanging around my neck on this golden chain? A jewel, a shining, misting jewel. It's planet Earth! On the chain of my colossal light body? Hmm. Spontaneously, I'm in love with this dreamy female creature. Never have I seen a more gorgeous creature. Mm -hmm. She moves in slow motion. A molasses bliss. She raises her eyes to catch my eyes. Her moist lips part sensuously. Her mystical expression beaming intense love for me. Wow. This is when a new faculty of consciousness begins to function within me. That of telepathic understanding with another creature, in this case, the goddess. She just thinks something, and I hear it in my mind. There is no need to physically utter the words in sound. She hears my thoughts with a similar faculty. Well, in this subliminal way, the goddess explains that she is from two other planets which she wears as rings on her colossal light body fingers, but that she has adopted Earth as her third planet, and she wishes me to affectionately call her Earthy. <laughs> she says that my meditating so intensely in the attic of the Tibetan monastery really turned her on. She muses, may I show you some healing ways to help your humanity down below? Well, spontaneously, <laughs> we lust for physical sex, to entwine one another in <laughs> a sultry Kama Sutra tantric merging. 
earthy rises up from her knees in the wet meadow of scintillating nirvana. We approach one another entranced, spellbound by one another. Goddess Earth is already absolutely naked. Mm. So I slowly and seductively remove my royal garments, disrobing, anticipating the cellular fireworks of foreplay. We embrace, <laughs> but fall right through each other <laughs> and fall down in the grassy meadow laughing <laughs> heartily to ourselves as we realize we cannot make love like they do down on earth because we have no physicality to our bodies. Rather, we're ethereal bodies Light bodies composed of millions of colorful, swirling sparks of spectacular light in the form only of human bodies. Well, try to picture this. If her hand were millions of dots of red light and my hand were millions of dots of um, yellow light, when our hands tried to hold each other, they'd pass right through each other. But as they did, they would make a flash of orange, the exact mixture of red and yellow. And most orange when our hands occupied the same space at the same time. And then the colors returning through all the fading chromatic scale back to the original primary red and yellow. Well, oh, Oof. my earth body gets tired in half lotus position, my spine aches, and I reluctantly bid farewell to goddess earth. And I come back down following my ever faithful golden thread and gently implode back in the Himalayas into the attic of the temple and into the roof of my skull. <laughs>